us. So we call to the north, the south, the east, and the west. We call our sons from afar and our daughters from the ends of the earth so that this house is blessed and full in Jesus' name. You believe it? Y'all believe it? Say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. We're going to praise the Lord. Glory to God. Y'all ready? Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Good. Okay. Ready? <laughs>
Isaiah 51. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, just express your heart to it. Express your gratitude. Hallelujah. Oh, he's a wonderful God. He's a faithful God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I delight to do your will. I delight myself in you, Lord. Even right now, this moment, Father, all of us, Lord, we say we delight ourselves in you. You are absolutely Thank you. 
on me to teach me something, don't it? <laughs> because he is good. All the time. All the time. He is 100% good. Yes, Hallelujah. Give him a shout. Don't you love him? Don't you love him? Oh, yes. We love him. Yes, we love you, Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. There is some changes happening. I don't, I can't, Lord hasn't revealed it to me, but I know there are changes happening in the spirit realm. Anybody bear witness with that? Is that anybody? Yeah. I think there's an awakening, an awakening of the, the giant of the body of Christ happening. We were discussing it this morning. It was kind of like this during this pandemic event. It was a time, I hope you took advantage of it to kind of get with God. You know what I mean? And get a fresh download, as the modern terms would be, uh, uh, reprogramming, um, spending time with God. It was a John 16 we brought up this morning uh, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you know, and he goes on to talk about you'll bear fruit and then more fruit and then much fruit. How many of you want to be that? Yes. Get your life source from the, from the vine. Well, you know, that's, you can't stick yourself up to the vine on Sunday, break away and sit on the shelf all week and then come back next Sunday and stick it back up there. <laughs> Huh? That's something you're going to have to continually do. Getting in his presence. We were talking this morning about getting in his presence. And uh, that's the heartbeat of your Christian life. When you get in his presence, it's an amazing thought because all the religious junk begins to fall away. All the, the ritual stuff and all the uh, all the stuff that we add to our life is just kind of way in the back, not even thought about, just in his presence. There's a peace that passes all understanding. I've been there, and I, I want to get back in the frequenting, if that's the right word, that place more often. Are you with me? Amen. Anybody here? Amen. Oh, that's really weak, man. Amen. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the highlight of my life. I mean, I'm never without him. I'm always aware of his presence. It's like I uh, have this peace about me. You know, even though sometimes my flesh and my soul gets riled up and, you know, and that's all like this or whatever. There's this peace that just surrounds me. Have you experienced it? Yes. Are you experiencing it? Yes. 
Don't let go of it. Don't let go of it. I've heard people talk about, you know, uh, you know, making decisions. Well, do you have peace? You're supposed to live in that peace. You know what I mean? Not just have peace when you make a decision about something. It's when that you're making a decision and there's no peace. You know, hey, that's the wrong way to go. But we're to live in that peace. Am I ministering to anybody? Am I telling you anybody anything new or what? Y'all too quiet. I mean, if you got to pull it down a little bit to breathe, okay, go ahead. I don't want you falling asleep, you know what I mean? <laughs> it really is. I found that during those times is when I really grew and the Lord revealed so much more to me than what I had found in going to church. Not saying church was bad. Church was good. Still is good. Um, but like I said, it's the heartbeat of this relationship that we call Christianity. Spending time with him. And that's where I grew the most. That's where I learned the most. It's amazing because you can download revelation that you're not even aware of. Just spending time with him. It's like coming to church. We're not coming for information. We're coming for revelation, Amen. Amen. for life, impartations. And that's the amazing thing about God's word. It's not, God's word is just not information. It's, it's spirit that transforms you. It changes you. And the thing is, a lot of times it's happening, you don't even know it. You realize that when you're out, out in, you know, after you walk out those doors and a situation or something comes up, and all of a sudden you realize it's different. Amen. I'm going to act different. You don't even have, you act different, not even making the conscious decision to act different. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. It's because it was transformation that took place inside of you. And that transformation is more like God. Becoming more and more into his image and likeness. You've heard me say it before. God orchestrated and put himself into words words are containers and then he gave us those words so we can put them inside of us and take on that same nature those same attributes that same character the same life that he is just through the words so does it matter how we hear the words Absolutely. Jesus said, he has ears, let him hear. How you hear will be measured back to you. How you honor and reverence the word is actually what gives him access to impart his self into you. Isn't that an amazing thought? And it's all in words. <laughs> words. Many times in his presence are unspeakable yet full of glory. Hallelujah. There's something I want to share. And then we have time because this will be hopefully very brief. If you remember, I spoke about last uh, two weeks ago. Was it two weeks? Three weeks ago now. The day of Pentecost, there were some signs that took place here. They were signs. That's just confirmations of different things. And uh, Brother Duffy was very, uh, he was a little more observant of some of those things than I was. So I'm going to have him come up and speak of them. But before I do that, under uh, last week ministering under the Spirit, though, I said something and it, it stuck with me. And I believe the Lord's going to have me go back to expand on it a little bit. Um, if you would, you have your Bibles, go to Revelations um, 12. <clears throat> the statement that the Lord had that made, that I made under the unction of the Spirit was His blood's doing the work. His blood is doing its part, is it not? Right. Yes. 
But what was lacking was our testimony. Wow. That's right. <laughs> and I know um, for me, I used to think testimony, okay? I'd stand up. Hey, God healed me last week. God, um, he helped me with this job last week. Or God did this or God did that. And that is testimony. Yes, it is. Although I believe here, he's talking about something a little bit more deeper than that. And what he's talking about, what is testimony? Testimony is bearing witness, isn't it? You're witnessing. You're establishing. Let me put it this way. You and your words are the establishing witness to his word. We overcome him, the enemy, the adversary, all of his works and all of his junk that he throws at us. By bearing witness to his word. When he throws at you sickness or pain. You bear up in him the witness. By Jesus stripes I have been healed. He is my God. He is my strength. This is his body. So that will get your hands off. You're bearing witness to his word. I am no longer in your kingdom. I belong to the kingdom of almighty God. See, you're establishing out of the mouth of two or three, let every word be established. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. See, you are the establishing witness of his word. That's, good. Right. That's, right. That's what he's talking. How are you going to overcome the enemy? How are you going to overcome the curse? I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. By Jesus being made a curse for me, for it is written, Curses every man in hangs on a tree, so that the blessing. I am blessed with faithful Abraham. I'm blessed in it. See, I'm establishing a witness right. which gives God a right to work. Right. Why did, remember the angel of the Lord <clears throat> speaking for the, on behalf of the Father came down and met with Abraham and he told him about the things that he was getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Why did he tell him that? Just to give him some information? No, it was so Abraham could intercede on that behalf and give God a right to work. See, God, we have to be the ones to speak the words to give him a right to work. Do you see that? So again, we are the establishing witness. Where do I want to go from here? I don't want to take up too much time. Go, 1 John 5, 14. Find it here. The degree in, or the measure that you honor, reverence his word, is the degree that he releases or manifests his spirit. And the degree of his spirit that is released is in the degree that we honor and reverence his word. How high do you honor and reverence his word? Do you reverence it above the curse? I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask you, are you establishing his word in you so that you can declare it, so that he can make it happen? We come to church and it seems like we pick up a lot of a lot of people, religious cliches or different phrases. You know, but until you make the effort to get to know his word and begin to speak it in your life, you'll remain the same. James said it this way, looking into the perfect law of liberty, but then walking away and forgetting about it. Right. See, every one of us look in the mirror every day. Am I right? Anybody here don't look in the mirror? <laughs> you say, oh, I know my face. Right? I know what I look like. Well, let me go. Let's go a little bit deeper in this, though. Until you look at it with the intent to know. 
That's the intent to know him. Okay, now you now have a mirror here in front of you. I want you to take think about it. If I ask you, all right, I'm going to draw a picture of your face. I want you to describe it to me. How far apart are your eyes? How long is your nose? What's the distance between your eyebrows and your chin? Can anybody here tell me? How many blemishes are on your face? Do you see what I'm saying? Until you look at it with the intent to know. That's how we got to look at his word. With the intent to know it. Because to know his word is to know him. And this is the confidence that we have. In him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears it. Do you know his will? Do you know? You can't ask in confidence until you know it. Do you know that it's his will? That you have absolutely no pain, no sickness, no problem in your life? Well, do you have the word for that problem? Here's another confidence. That we know that he hears us. Mm -hmm. right. See, he's, he's listening. Amen. Jesus is the apostle and the high priest of our confession of what we say. He's listening. Yes. So you can be the establishing witness of his life in the earth. Giving him a right to work in your life. <laughs> Glory to God. Are you grabbing this? Yes. See, this is how we overcome these obstacles. Well, look at Mark 11, 24, 23, 24. Have faith in God. Do you have faith in God? So what? You can, whosoever would say to the mountain and don't doubt in his heart, but believe those things he says. Is God hearing you say it? What if you're only thinking it? What if you're only wishing that problem could leave? See, it's not giving him the right. I'm going to overcome the enemy and all of the work of the curse and all of the stuff of this earth by what? The blood of the Lamb, which has redeemed me, bought me, and made me the righteousness of God. It's doing its job. Now it's waiting on my testimony to speak. I'm going to bear witness of his word. I'm more than an overcomer. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. If God be for me, no one can know nothing can be against me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. See, now I'm overcoming. I'm giving him a witness to establish and manifest himself in my life. Are you with me? I can get excited and preach now, boy. Go for it. Hallelujah. First, 2 Corinthians 4.13. As it is written, we, having the same spirit of faith, anybody recognize it? 13. I apologize, I said 14. And since we have in the same spirit of faith, just that same faith that spoke to the mountain, according to what is written, I have believed, therefore I spoke. I also believe and therefore speak. Wow. See, you can actually release the same power, the same forces that created this world. And everything in it. You can release it out of your mouth in your words. And it will adhere to the same force that created it. The force of faith contained in words coming from God. Does that make sense? It's all through the Bible. <clears throat> Look at the... Uh, no, I'm not going to go there. Glory to... Did you get something out of that? That was short, but that was sweet, I think. You are the establishing witness to overcome the adversary and all of the curse. That's why with the mouth confession is made unto. Yes. With the mouth confession is made unto. So you're putting on, and really, that's how you put on, go to Ephesians 6. That's how you put on the armor of light. Remember the the gospel, the uh, the helmet of salvation, right? 
the breastplate of righteousness. You ought to be putting it on with the confession of your mouth. Because every one of these pieces of armor and weaponry, they are word activated. They are subject to, how do I word it in here? They are subject to verbal action. How do you put on the breastplate of righteousness? Come, I just told you. <laughs> Begin to speak it. I am the righteousness of God. I, my loins, my mind, this is talking about the loins, your waist, talking about the loins of your mind is girded with the word of truth. So you know what to speak. You're going to know the truth. And the truth what? But it's only the truth that you act on. And your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken, complete, wholeness, shalom. But think about that word, the preparation. What's that mean? What's he saying? The preparation of the gospel of peace. As you begin to confess the word, you are preparing and walking in the path and in the things that you are confessing. You're preparing your life for the abundance and the blessing it has ahead of you. Amen. What is the gospel? The blessing. You're preparing yourself to walk in that blessing. Amen. Are y'all getting it? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Now with that, I want to give Duffy some time. And if he goes over, you know what? We are bound to an hour by law, but you know what? There is a higher law. And I don't mean to break that law, but at the same time, when it comes down to me making a choice, who do I follow? <laughs> Guess which one's going to lose? <laughs> Come on up here, Mr. Duffy. He's going to talk about some observations he made the day of Pentecost. We had manifestations here of the Spirit all around us. Uh, Brother Pete had given me uh, a couple, three, three sheets of paper with things, and they're very similar to what Mr. Duffy has here. Please welcome Mr. Minister Duffy. <laughs> This is my brother from another mother. <laughs> you hear that? You hear that? My Martin? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise again. Is that the best you can do? God bless you, man of God. Thank you so much, Pastor uh, Martin, for, for just allowing me this uh, time. Um, of course, we won't take up too much time. I didn't realize I was going to come behind you. Powerful word. We are the establishing witness. Amen. We are the establishing witness. Amen. Did you get that? Did you get that? We are the establishing witness. Amen. Amen. That was powerful. Amen. Well, um, if you remember uh, the day of Pentecost, that, that was the service that we had outside. Um, now, many of you were here. <laughs> and um, you know, I, that week I just began to share some things with Pastor Ken. Actually, I think I called you on that Monday. I think I called you that Monday after that after the day of Pentecost because he was actually um, having us to prepare. And he was actually saying he doesn't know how things are going to go. He said he was saying um, we're going to wait on the Lord. Okay, and uh, he was saying that when we had rehearsal that Saturday. And actually, he had spoken to me that, that same week before. And I really didn't catch the concept of what he was talking about, about waiting on the Lord. And in fact, he didn't even really know um, all the details of what that meant. And so um, waiting on the Lord, you know, you know, when, when I receive it in my psyche, when he was saying it, I'm like, okay, so that means he's not going to preach. And that means we got to play. We got to come up with some songs and take up the empty space and all of that. But, but it was much more than that. And I didn't catch it until that Monday after the service. And so that's when the Lord gave it to me. And, um, but that week before Pentecost, a young lady sent, sent just out of the clear blue, sent us over a scripture, which was Psalm 27, 
the 14th verse, and it says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, he shall strengthen thine heart. Amen. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Okay, you're familiar with that, right? That's Psalm 27. It said, Wait, I say, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Out of the clear blue, she said that to my wife and I. <clears throat> what, that, what does that have to do with you? I'll share that with you in a minute. Then Pastor Ken was telling us uh, that this Sunday, you know, he just felt like the Lord was going to have us to wait on him. That was the day of Pentecost. And um, so his scripture, I don't know if you remember, but the scripture was Isaiah 40, verse 31. And it says, here's, here's what it was. It was, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And then he stopped. You know that there's still more to that verse. And it says, they shall, you know, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Or something, or no, something like that. They shall mount up on wings of eagles. But he stopped at, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Mind you, remember the scripture I just gave you. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Then he gave us, but, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And that's where he stopped on that verse. Okay? And so I'm listening to all of this. I'm, I'm like, man, how, how does all this wait? How does all this uh, make sense or match up? And then I heard from another um, preacher, a friend of ours, and the scripture she gave was Luke, the 24th chapter, and the 49th verse. And it says this, and we're, talking, we're actually leading up to Pentecost. And it says, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. What does that word tarry mean? The, another word for tarry means wait. Okay? And so when we think of wait, we're thinking like, okay, sitting here, just waiting. No. We wait with an expectation. We, we have a hope of what the Lord is going to do. We have a hope of what's about to happen. Amen. Expecting something. Yeah. Tarrying. Jesus told them to go into Jerusalem and wait there until you be endued with power from on high. This was before Pentecost. This was before Acts, the, Acts, the second chapter. And then Acts, the first chapter, uh, says, and of course, I don't want to take up too much time, but Acts, the first chapter, says this. <laughs> Beginning at the third verse, it says, to whom also he showed himself, this is after Jesus rose, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. The next verse, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And then verse 8 of Acts 1, it says, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, Amen. and you shall be witnesses. Mm, praise the Lord. You shall be witnesses of me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Witnesses, witnesses, witnesses. Right. The man of God just got finished telling us about we are the establishing witness. That's right. And we don't have to come up with our own word. All we have to do is agree with the truth that's already been established, which is the word of God. We just need to repeat that. Yeah. We just need to rehearse that and declare that, and we become, the, we become the establishing witness. I love that, how you put that. Walk right into what we were talking about. Okay, and then Acts, I'm going to be finished in a few minutes. Acts, the second chapter, the uh, first through the fourth verse. Of course, you're familiar with it. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Of course, just like we were out there that day. 
And suddenly there came, wasn't it a beautiful day that day? Yes. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues of fire, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave, gave them utterance. And then we're going to go to, I'm, 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 I, just have to establish, I just have to establish this backdrop to show you what I'm talking about. So then Acts, the second chapter, uh, it's the sitting, beginning at the 16th verse, you're familiar with it again. And it says, of course, they thought that the people were drunk as, after they got filled with the Holy Ghost. And Peter spoke up and said, but this is that. Well, he said, for these are not drunk as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But he said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Does that include you? Amen. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall dream, shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, is that you? Amen. <laughs> I will pour out in those, hallelujah. And, I, and listen to this verse. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop on that one. Okay, so the reason I read that one was because, I don't know if you remember, but we had a, another couple that, we, that we, my wife and I invited. They were their friends of ours. They were sitting on the front row outside. And, of course, while Pastor Ken was preaching, they were actually looking up in the sky. And they saw a cloud. They saw a small cloud. And, and obviously that cloud just captivated their attention. And so, so here we are. I will show signs in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. So, so they saw this cloud. Both of them saw it. They said it was a small cloud, and then it started enlarging itself. And my wife said she, she actually saw it as well because she saw them looking up. And so she said, what are they looking at? So she happened to look up as well and saw that same cloud. And, and they said that the cloud expanded, and it looked like it was a person's face in it to them. Both of them said the same thing. All three of them actually said the same thing. Word of witness. Two or three out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. And so there's a it looked like a person's face, two eyes, and, it, and the one gentleman said that it looked like the person was actually blowing. And the other, the, the lady said that it looked like a person was singing you know, how, how a person just kind of owes their mouth and it looks like they're singing. But to him, it looked like the person was blowing. And uh, I don't know if you remember, but there was a wind that actually came along. You know, remember, anybody remember that? There was a wind that came along. And um, of course, that first wind, I really didn't pay a whole lot of attention to, but the, there was another wind actually after the service and I really didn't pay a whole lot of attention to that. But there was a wind. So we're talking about the day of, this is on the day of Pentecost. Okay, and so, so I came with an attitude expecting something supernatural from the Lord. I came expecting, you know, what the Lord wanted to do in these last days. And, um, and so what he, what he shared with me What he shared with me is that when we when we were um, quarantined at our house and we couldn't go to church, we couldn't do this and that, man, that was the time for us to really dig in and really listen for the voice of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, could, should we have listened to the news? Yes, we should listen to the news and just see what's going on for a little bit. But that news should not be the only thing going on in our houses, and it shouldn't be all day long. That's right. Come on. Come on. I believe God wanted us to, God wanted to shut us in so that we can seek his face. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, turn the TV off, turn the radio off, turn the phone off, and just humble themselves, seek my face. 
and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Then will I forgive their sin and heal their land. Okay, but so the Lord is, so here, here and you said the scripture earlier, you said, um, you said, hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. And, and I loved how he was sharing just this morning about us learning the word of God. We need to learn the word of God because if we don't have the word of God in us, we can't witness what the Holy Spirit, what the word's saying. So now we come up with whatever we see or whatever, you know, somebody else suggests. We'll believe the doctor's report over God's report. We'll believe other people's opinions over what God says. God's word is truth. His word is forever established in heaven. The truth of God, and it will endure forever. This is the, this is the authority. This is the final authority of what our lives, what we should be listening to. And I believe now this, the coronavirus did not take God by surprise. It's actually prophesied already in the word. Amen. It's in his word already. So since it's already there, he gives us instructions on how to prepare, what to do. And during that time of quarantine, man, it should have been, and, it, and God knows it was for me, you know, our duty to just really tune our ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. When we come back to church, no, not church as usual, not the same old, same old, but coming with a brand new expectation. We, during that time, a recalibration should have taken place in our lives. A new standard, a new normal, as they would say. A recalibration. A new appreciation for the Spirit of the Lord. A new appreciation for our relationship with Him. A new appreciation for His Word. Appreciating His Word. Now let's examine ourselves. And here's what the Spirit is saying. Man, encourage my people to get in my Word. Dive in the Word. Know the Word. Oh, and my former pastor would say, make friends with your Bible. How can we, how can we get that into the spirit of men? Make friends with your Bible. Make friends because it's the word of God. This is the authority. This is the truth that shall endure forever. Amen. This is our roadmap through life. The roadmap through life. Our instruction book, the Bible. The acronyms, the basic instructions before leaving earth. Praise the, Lord. the roadmap to life. Let me, let me just, and, and actually I'm finished. Let, let me encourage you to learn and tune your ear into the voice of the Holy Spirit. To hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Man, all the strife, let's get it out of our lives. Oh, all the backbiting, let's get it out of, our, out of our lives. All the things that keep us and hinder us from the things of God. Man, if somebody offended us, forgive them. Man, get all the junk out of our lives so that our hearts will be pure before the Lord. And so that when we come into the house of God, we raise up holy hands, pure. We send up a sweet-smelling aroma. Yeah into the Lord, a sacrifice of praise, yes. a pure, holy sacrifice that is acceptable to him. And let us not come to church like we used to. Man, let us have a brand new mindset on approaching the house of God with expectation to meet him and to hear him. Hallelujah. They that seek the Lord, they that seek the Lord shall be found of him. When we seek him, he shall be found. He's not trying to hide himself from us. He wants to reveal himself even the more. He wants to pour into us the knowledge of Christ. He wants to pour into us, hallelujah, his will, his way, his way of doing things so that the kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. What's being done in heaven that God wants done on the earth. We want to be vessels. We want to be the vessels of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So he can use us. Are you willing today? Amen. Are you willing today to be that person, that vessel? Amen. 
Yes, purifying your hearts before the Lord. He said, purify your hearts, O ye sinners. That's what he says. Purify your hearts. Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. Man, allow the Lord to purge us. Oh, I love how you shared in your message. And I'm out of the way. How we cannot expect to be a branch outside of the vine and just come one Sunday a week and expect to reattach our branch to the to the vine. Man, we need to be attached 24-7. Amen. Amen. We need to be at the behest of the Holy Ghost 24-7, man. Not just on, on occasion, but man, we need to have just a relationship with him because he's the one that we live in and move in and we have our being in him. We cannot do anything without the Lord. You know what, you know what? Let me retract that statement. You can do some things without the Lord, but he that honors me, shall be, shall, I shall honor. And he that despises me shall be lightly esteemed. You remember that message just a few months ago by Pastor Ken? He that honors me, and just in this, this last statement, and I'm not, you know, tooting my horn because, man, I need, man, I, I just need him to fill me Amen. every single day. I, I need Jesus probably more than all of y'all. <laughs> but, you know, the, the one thing I did, you know, this week past with um, a crew of workers that I had with me, every single day we pause to pray and invite the Holy Spirit to guide us into our duties lead us into our duties. We, we paused, and in fact, there were a couple days that we actually jumped right in without acknowledging the Lord. And after we got started, I said, hold it, let's stop, put your, put your equipment down, let's gather together to pray. We could have chosen, because we knew how to do the job, to continue without honoring the Lord, without stopping to honor him, but I said, no, I choose to stop, pause, to honor the Lord. Lord, I want you involved in every single detail of this job. I want the beauty of the Lord to be seen after we touch, touch this thing. I want you to be involved in everything. I don't want to assume they're walking up four flights of steps. Man, we need the Lord carrying equipment. We need the Lord. I want my steps ordered by him. We committed our works to the Lord so that our thoughts would be established. We committed our ways to him so that our goings would be established. And so the Lord is saying, man, he's just wanting us to welcome him in every detail of our lives. Even your love making. Dun, 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 even everything. He wants, to, he wants it to be involved in everything. He created us for his divine pleasure. And it's in him that we live and move and have our being. God bless you. Amen. Is that good or what? Amen. Amen. You know, I heard everyone of you say something this week, and I encourage you to do it. Just every day, commit your life, your day to the Lord. I do it every day. I said, Lord, direct my thoughts and order my steps that I may be pleasing to you and everything. I do it every day. Amen. You can do that. Just that simple. Include him. That's honoring him. Amen. 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 We have some, we want to pass these out to all the fathers. When do you want to begin to pass them out? We just want to honor our fathers. The men of God. Well, Okay, I'm just pulling Bob. You got something you want to say? Okay. While she's passing out, I want to read something. He said something and it triggered. I had already referred to it, but I want to read it to you. How do we get, you know, he talked about having God's will on earth as it is in heaven. You know, his word is his will. This is verse 16 of chapter 51 of Isaiah. Listen to this. I said it earlier in our praise. Let's plant our praise in heaven. He said, I have put my words in your mouth. I have covered you with the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Doesn't that bear witness with everything that we've said today? Put his words in our mouth that he may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth. Amen. Well, <clears throat> let's stand to your feet. If you would, just... Yes, we need... Well, Di, can you hit the number three button on that? Raise your hand and just say, Lord, I commit my life, my thoughts to honoring you every day. I want you involved in everything I say and do. I ask you to move into my life in a greater way, in a greater strength, with greater authority and demonstration of power that I may establish your word as you would lead me in this earth and in my life. Thank you, Lord. It is done. And I praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all are going to see, you're going to notice healing taking place in your body. I just saw it. You're going to notice it in the days to come. Some of, I didn't see it. I'm not saying it won't be, but I just, what I, what I, what he saw me was, you'd be going along a few days from now and say, oh wow, it's not there anymore. Amen. Can you receive it? Yes. So I'll receive it, Lord. I'll receive it, Lord. That pain is under the curse and I am the redeemed from all of the curse. So I'm healed. By your stripes, I am healed. I am whole in Jesus' name. See, he just established his word. Continue doing that. Amen. God bless you. We love you and uh, hope to see you again soon. All right. Okay, yeah.